I, Your Excellency, and Honourable Minister, uh, once again welcome indeed for this segment of the visit of His Excellency, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation. We will run as follows. Your Excellency, you will make a brief statement on the visit, and His Excellency, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation, will also make a statement. Then, after your statement, we will have questions from the present uh, journalists. From the Ugandan side, we will have four questions from Mr. Walter Mwesije of NTV, from Mr. Patrick Onen of the Associated Press, and Betty Amam Kiror from New Vision, and Samuel Senono from Uganda Broadcasting Corporation. Your Excellency, I welcome you to make your statement. Ваше превосходительство, уважаемый господин президент, ваше превосходительство, уважаемый господин министр, добро пожаловать на очередную часть официального визита министра иностранных дел России в Уганду. И наша программа сейчас будет следующей. Для начала его превосходительство выступит с краткой, с краткой речью, после этого министр иностранных дел Сергей Лавров также выступит с речью, и затем мы перейдем к вопросам от присутствующих здесь журналистов. Со стороны Уганды мы услышим четыре вопроса, в том числе от Associated Press, New Vision и Ugandan Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, спасибо. Your Excellency, the Foreign Minister, and your delegation, Uganda, the people of Uganda, and myself, welcome you here. You are the first high-level Russian government leader who has ever visited Uganda. As I told you in our private meeting, I've been active for, more, for the more than 60 years now as a student leader and as a leader in other capacities. I therefore have been following and I, I never saw Gromiko coming here. He was the foreign minister for a long time. He never came. Oh. The other leaders, Kosigin, never came. But you have come, so we welcome you here. However, the fact that no high-ranking Russian leader has ever come here, Russia has been supporting the anti-colonial African movement for the last 100 years. I have informed you in our private meeting that by 1900, the whole of Africa had been colonized except for Ethiopia. Africa had been colonized partly because of our internal weaknesses. We had uh, feudal chiefs who were incapable, who could not defend our, our independence. And Africa had been being ravaged by the slave trade for, uh, for almost 100 years before the colonization of 1900. When the African chiefs failed to defend our independence, the Africans started organizing, led by new forces. And the first group was in South Africa in 1912, when the African National Congress was founded. That was the, now the modern 
African and colonial resistance movement. Fortunately, and that's, what, that's how Russia comes in, in 1917, a new force took over Russia. These were the Bolsheviks. I don't know what problems you have with the Bolsheviks, whether you like them or you don't, but for us, we appreciate them because they supported us. They started supporting our anti-colonial struggle. And that is our relationship with Russia. Russia, so the Soviet Union, supporting the anti-colonial movement in Africa. Then in 1949, we were also lucky to have a new, a new force, the communists, taking over uh, China, the, the big country of China. And again, they supported us. Then we had some other socialist countries, Cuba and so on. So therefore, whenever issues come up and some people want us to take positions against Russia, we say, but you people, these people have been with us for the last 100 years. How can we be automatically uh, against them? We have even forgiven our former enemies, the colonialists, the ones who had colonized us, the ones who had actually taken slaves from here and did bad things. We have forgiven them and we are working with them. How can we be against somebody who has never harmed us and who instead helped us? Yes, when the Russians make mistakes, in 1968, I was in the university, and I was in the streets in Dar es Salaam, demonstrating against uh, Brezhnev's decision to invade Czechoslovakia, to overthrow Alexander Dubček. So, if Russia makes mistakes, then we, we, we tell them, like, like, we, like we did. In 1968, but when they have not made a mistake, we cannot be against them. So this is point number one. This is the historical context which, which those who are ignorant about world affairs should know. Because there seems to be a lot of ignorance in world affairs. People have a very limited understanding of philosophy, of strategy, which we don't accept. For us, we have got our clear position as part of the African liberation movement. We know who is who and who is doing what and why, and we know where we stand. Coming to today, we have got a lot of potential. Well, we have, of course, we have been working with, the, with, the, with Russia and with the Soviet Union before, especially in the areas of security. Our first Air Force was trained by, by, uh, by, by Czechs. We used to buy equipment from Czechoslovakia and then the Soviet Union itself, and we have been working with them on the security field. But now we have added new areas. The Joint Permanent Commission is going to meet in October and go into the details of the areas we can cooperate in. Uganda, as you can see, we produce a lot. There's nothing agriculture in the world that we cannot produce here. So if you need anything, agricultural, coffee, we've got a lot of coffee. We're the biggest producers of coffee in the whole of Africa. Uh, tea, uh, milk, beef, grain, uh, bananas. We're, we're the second biggest producers of bananas in the whole world. So uh, all those things. And some of our products go to Russia through through Western Europe. 
but we can now deal directly with you. And then we have also talked of cooperation or cooperating in space, space science. Uganda would like to have its own small satellite to see what is happening around the, the globe. Then uh, nuclear energy, although Uganda has got uh, hydropower and sun and so on, but we have also got a lot of uranium, which we like to use to generate electricity and for other purposes, medical, uh, bi biotech, and so on. Then in the area of the, what we call the pathogenic economy, the economy which deals with the vaccines, deals with therapeutics, deals with diagnostics. So all these fields are open. The market here is a big market. You have the internal market of Uganda of 43 million people. Then we have East Africa with a population of three, more than 300 million people. And then you have the whole of Africa, which is part of the CFTA, the, the, the continental free trade area of 1.5 billion people. So we, we, we want to trade with Russia, we want to trade with all countries of the world. We don't believe in uh, uh, being enemies of somebody's enemy. No, we want to make our own enemies, not, not, not fight other people's enemies. This is our, our doctrine. The, the, when there was the Cold War, one day they asked me a question. Are you pro-East or pro-West? I said, you must, you must think I am an idiot. Why do you think my, my main job is to be pro-somebody? I am pro-myself. And I deal with all other people according to how they relate with my own interests. These people think we are, we, are, we, are, we are stupid. Such a question is idiotic question. It's not my job to be pro-East or pro-West. I am pro-myself. And I, I deal with people according to how they relate with me. So, if you invite me to talk, you do so at your own risk. I can talk for a long time. So, not to take your time, I welcome you to make your comments. Thank you very much. Большое спасибо, уважаемый господин президент. Дамы и господа, прежде всего, хотел бы поблагодарить наших угандийских друзей, наших хозяев и, в первую очередь, лично президента Мусавени за очень теплый прием и за содержательную и хорошо организованную работу. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to thank our Ugandan friends and our hosts, but personally, Mr. President, for this hospitality that you are giving us and for the, well, for the good organization of this event. Мы провели несколько часов в очень подробных, содержательных переговорах, обсудили все аспекты нашего двустороннего сотрудничества на основе тех принципиальных договоренностей, которые были достигнуты между президентами Уганды и Российской Федерации в ходе их регулярных контактов и вопросы, которые связаны с урегулированием конфликтов в Африке и с международной повесткой дня в целом. We spent a few hours with Mr. President having an intense and fruitful discussion. We have covered all the aspects of our cooperation in line with the agreements reached between the presidents of uh, our states. And we have discussed the regional context, the settlement of African crises, as well as the international agenda. Mr. President has made a very powerful, dark, dark excursion in the history of our relationships. It is really been more than a century, if we начнем отсчет с периода, когда Африка стала выступать за деколонизацию, и наша страна активнейшим образом поддержала страны континента и возглавила движение, которое завершилось в начале 60-х годов принятием соответствующей декларации Генеральной Ассамблеи ООН. 
The president has given a bright, informative, and intense overview of the history of our relations. And truly, our relations started over 100 years ago, at the time of the fight against the colonialism. And uh, our country at that time actively supported the African states in their fight. And uh, this movement lasted up to the 60s and ended up with the signature of the Declaration of the General Assembly of the United Nations. In 1962, in Народу Уганды произошло знаменательное событие, он обрел независимость, и в том же году Уганда была признана Советским Союзом, так что 13 октября нынешнего года мы отмечаем 60-летие дипломатических отношений, договорились достойно эту дату отметить. In 1962, uh, there was a flagship event in the history of Uganda. At, it is at that time that the country became independent. And on the 30th of October, we are going to celebrate the 60th anniversary since the, the establishment of uh, our relations when the Soviet Union recognized Uganda. Мы сегодня обсудили вопросы нашего экономического сотрудничества. Есть перспективные задумки в таких областях, как энергетика, геологоразведка, добыча полезных ископаемых, научная сфера, телекоммуникации, кибербезопасность, сельское хозяйство, а также проекты, связанные с сотрудничеством в сфере использования ядерных технологий для медицины и в сельском хозяйстве, равно как и перспективы сотрудничество в запуске угандийского спутника на орбиту Земли. We have discussed all the areas covering the economic cooperation between our countries, and we find lots of promising domains, including energy, uh, geological studies, hydrocarbons, cybersecurity, agriculture, and the use of nuclear technology for agriculture and medicine, as well as the launch of uh, the satellite for Uganda. Все эти вопросы мы договорились конкретно и с прицелом на практический результат проработать к очередному заседанию межправительственной комиссии по торгово-экономическому сотрудничеству. Оно намечено на октябрь нынешнего года. И при подготовке к этому мероприятию мы будем учитывать результаты, состоявшиеся в декабре, в ноябре прошлого года, бизнес-миссии российских предпринимателей в Уганде. We agreed to give width and uh, content to uh, the preparation of the next session of the Intergovernmental Commission on Economic Cooperation, which uh, is expected to be held in October this year. And while preparing for this event, we have also agreed to take into account the agreement that have been reached during the business mission this year. Мы также договорились рассмотреть вопрос о создании здесь лаборатории с помощью российских специалистов для совместного исследования вопросов, связанных с предотвращением и борьбой с эпидемиологическими заболеваниями. Мы подробно говорили о ситуации в мире, прежде всего с точки зрения Принципов, которые были заложены в устав ООН, главным принципом из которых является уважение суверенного равенства государств, у нас единая позиция, что именно этим нужно руководствоваться при решении любых проблем, которые возникают в международных отношениях. We have also uh, discussed the global situation today, and we discussed it from the perspective of uh, the respect uh, for the UN Charter, and uh, we all agree that uh, the main principle is uh, the sovereign right of independent states, and we agree that uh, all the international agenda should be considered in uh, this light. Господин Президент приводил сегодня примеры из собственной практики и политической деятельности, когда у него спросили, является ли он прозападным или провосточным политиком, он дал единственный верный ответ для серьезных политических деятелей, но, к огромному сожалению, сейчас вот эти вот рецидивы колониального мышления, инстинкты колониальной политики проявляются в политике наших западных стран, когда они требуют от всего мира занять позицию за них и против всех остальных. Mr. President have, uh, has given us the example from his political life when he was asked the question about whether he's pro-West or pro-East, and he gave the only right answer about being pro-himself. But unfortunately today we see lots of tentatives and instincts of that colonial 
epoch in uh, the policy of our Western partners and because they demand the whole world to choose their sides to be for them or against them. Мы сегодня, конечно, подробно говорили о том, какие события разворачиваются на мировой арене, в глобальной политике в связи с теми целями, которые Запад хотел решить через использование Украины против Российской Федерации. Today we have also discussed uh, the current situation uh, in the globe in the light of uh, the use uh, of Ukraine by the West to, uh, to satisfy its own interests. Мы высоко оцениваем мы с уважением относимся к ответственной, сбалансированной позиции Уганды и других африканских стран, которые не заняли в связи с происходящим на Украине и вокруг нее. We highly appreciate uh, the well-balanced and responsible position that has taken Uganda together with other African states in the light of the current events in Ukraine. Говорили сегодня также о первопричинах э, нынешних кризисов в сфере энергетики, в сфере снабжения мировых рынков продовольствием. Вокруг этого идет э, очень громкая э, кампания, но первопричины нашим африканским друзьям понятны. Они не связаны с тем, что происходит сейчас в рамках специальной военной операции. И мы условились в наших двусторонних отношениях учитывать нынешнюю ситуацию и искать такие возможности и в сфере энергетики, и в сфере торговли сельхозпродуктами, которые не будут зависеть от капризов наших западных коллег. Uh, we have also uh, discussed uh, the current situation on the energy market and uh, uh, food provision. And our African friends understand that the current situation has nothing to, nothing to do with the special military operation in Ukraine. And we agree that in our bilateral relations we are going to be underpinned by uh, this principle and we're going to search for new areas, for new ways of cooperation in the energy and in the uh, food market. Которые Уганда предпринимает для продвижения сотрудничества в рамках Африканского Союза, для урегулирования различных кризисов, которые сохраняются на континенте, включая и Демократическую Республику Конго, в целом район Великих Озер, Южный Судан, Сомали, Центральноафриканскую Республику. Россия confirmed its support of Uganda in the African Union in terms of uh, fighting against the current crisis on the African continent, I mean uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, the region of uh, Great Lakes, uh, the South Sudan, and Somalia. Россия принципиально придерживается позиции, в соответствии с которой у африканских проблем должно быть африканское решение. Именно страны континента должны сами определять, как справляться с той или иной проблемой, а международное сообщество в лице Совета Безопасности – зарубежных стран должно помогать африканским странам и с точки зрения политической и в плане оснащения миротворческих континентов современным оборудованием. Uh, Russia has a principal position in terms of uh, uh, that there are African solutions for African problems and uh, it is up to the Africans, to African countries to decide on their own future. And as for the international community, its role, including, the, um, including individual states and the UN Security Council, is to help them, to assist them and to provide necessary assistance in terms of uh, uh, politics and uh, peacekeeping missions. И, безусловно, мы в очередной раз подтвердили позицию России в отношении э, переговоров о реформе Совета Безопасности ООН. Once again, we confirmed our positions when it comes to the reforming of the UN Security Council. Мы убеждены, что проблемой нынешнего состава Совета Безопасности является абсолютная недопредставленность развивающихся стран, поэтому решением этой проблемы должно быть расширение числа стран Азии, Африки и Латинской Америки в составе этого ведущего органа Организации Объединенных Наций. Uh, we, uh, we are convinced uh, that the main problem here is the underrepresentation in, uh, in uh, the Security Council of Developing States, and the only solution to this problem is the bigger representation of Asian, African, Latin American countries. Я поблагодарил еще раз господина президента за uh, очень теплый прием. Мы будем готовиться к 60-летию дипломатических отношений. По этому поводу я пригласил моего коллегу, министра иностранных дел Уганды, посетить Россию с визитом. 
I, uh, once again, I thank Mr. President for his hospitality, and uh, currently we are preparing for the um, events uh, related to the 60th, 60th anniversary since the establishment of diplomatic ties between our states. And on this occasion, I invited my colleague, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Uganda, to come with an official visit to Russia. Спасибо. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellencies, for your statements. As I did indicate from the very beginning, we will have four questions from Ugandan um, journalists and two questions from Russian journalists, Denis from Sputnik News and Maria for RT for Russia. I would like to begin by asking um, Walter Mwesije to ask his question. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellencies. My question really goes to the Foreign Minister, who is our guest today. And we would like to know your take about the current uh, economic crisis in the country, because some sections of the globe think and apportion blame to Russia uh, because of the ongoing war in Ukraine. Thank you. Я уже касался этого вопроса. Могу только э, дополнительно сказать, что сейчас наши западные коллеги э, практически все без исключения проблемы сваливают на Россию. Basically, I have touched upon this issue, and uh, the only one comment that I can add is that our Western colleagues nowadays uh, blame Russia for everything. Началось это задолго до нынешней военной операции на Украине, но вот вспомните 2016 год. Никакой украинской проблемы нет, а Трампа избрала Российская Федерация. Actually, this started a long time before the current uh, military operation in the Ukraine. You can remember the year 2016, when there was no Ukrainian dossier, but once again they said that it was Russia who elected President Trump. Ну и многократно потом Европейский Союз uh, говорил uh, в течение вот последних шести-семи лет, что Россия использует газ в качестве оружия, не приводя никаких конкретных примеров, и параллельно делая все, чтобы ограничить мощности перекачки газа, которыми обладал Северный поток-1. And uh, the EU on multiple occasions uh, for the last six to seven years said that Russia uses gas as a weapon without giving any arguments to that. And at the same time, they kept doing their best in order to limit the capacity of the Nord Stream to... Не так давно Польша отказалась получать напрямую российский газ по имеющемуся газопроводу. Украина сократила вдвое транзит российского газа через свою территорию. А виновата опять Россия. Recently, Pol Poland has uh, stopped uh, getting gas through the existing pipeline, and Ukraine reduced twice uh, the, uh, the amount of gas through its territory. But once again, they say that uh, it is Russia to blame. Ну и, конечно, Северный поток-2, который полностью готов к тому, что, чтобы компенсировать э, нужды, чтобы удовлетворить нужды Европы э, в этом виде топлива, он просто закрыт э, по сугубо политическим причинам, э, хотя все инвестиции, которые были сделаны в этот мегапроект, были сделаны в полном соответствии с Евросоюзовским законодательством, однако как только все это уже было готово к э, функционированию, Еврокомиссия задним числом, подчеркну это, задним числом приняла нормативы, которые до сих пор используются для торможения этого важнейшего для энергобезопасности Европы газопровода. And once again, coming to Nord Stream 2, it is ready to be used in order to offset the current situation and to meet the needs of Europe. But uh, currently, it stays closed for purely political reasons. And let me say that all the investments have been made in line with the European uh, legislation. But uh, when it was already, the European Commission, by retraction, took another law in order to stop it working. Сейчас вот раздувается история с турбинами Симонса, которые проходили регламентные работы в Канаде, которые Канада не захотела возвращать. 
Потом Стимонс при поддержке германского правительства добился их возвращения, но нам никто не может внятно в документах объяснить, какой теперь статус, во-первых, этой турбины и других турбин, которые должны проходить регламентные работы в Канаде. I think you all hear the story about the turbines, uh, Siemens turbines in Can in Canada about their maintenance, which uh, they couldn't get back. And then, with the help of the German government, uh, they had them back. But uh, on papers and documents, no one can give us uh, the explanation of the current status of these turbines and others. Сейчас вот поднялся шум. Я сегодня смотрел новости вокруг того, что Газпром еще одну машину, еще одну турбину перекачивающую должен поставить на сервисное обслуживание. Собирается какая-то внеочередная, чрезвычайная сессия Евросоюза по энергетике. Будут наверняка звучать инвективы в адрес «Газпрома». Но у меня очень простой вопрос. Если есть регламент, который обеспечивает безопасность функционирования газопровода, нас что, призывает этот регламент нарушать? как это делают представители Германии, в частности. Я не знаю, как представители Германии, которые, в общем-то, славятся такой национальной чертой, как педантизм, аккуратность, могут призывать к нарушению правил, от которых зависит безопасность людей. I, today I watched the news and uh, I saw lots of buzz in the news currently about the fact that the Gazprom company has to, uh, has to give its turbines for another uh, maintenance services and uh, there is a, some kind of energy session held in the EU. But here is my question. If there are rules to ensure security of turbines, then shall we violate them as Germans do? But it is really weird and I am bewildered because Germans seem to be very committed to rules usually. Вот. Ну и то же самое происходит с темой продовольственного кризиса. Он начался с ростом цен в период, когда разразилась пандемия коронавирусной инфекции несколько лет назад. Потом западные страны стали бороться с ее последствиями печатанием плохо обеспеченных денег и многие другие вещи, которые отразили просчеты в политике Запада на этом направлении, о которых мы хорошо знаем, о которых можно почитать подробно в докладах Всемирной продовольственной программы и ФАО, Всемирной продовольственной организации ООН. Then when it comes to the current food crisis, it also started earlier when there was the surge of prices owing to the COVID-19 pandemic a few years ago. Then the European states started their fight against uh, the effects of the pandemic and uh, they did it by emitting new money without having them well backed. And uh, so there, are many, there were many miscalculations and errors and you can read about them thoroughly in uh, the records of the World Food Program and the FAO. Вот. Ну и единственное, каким образом украинская ситуация связана с продовольственной безопасностью, это через незаконные агрессивные санкции, которые Запад ввел против Российской Федерации. Эти санкции затрагивают всю логистическую цепочку, и финансовую, и транспортную, которую требуется сохранять и обеспечивать для бесперебойного достава, достава, бесперебойных поставок российского зерна потребителю. And the only connection that we could find between the operation in Ukraine and uh, the current crisis is uh, the, uh, are the illegal and aggressive sanctions uh, imposed on Russia because they disrupt uh, all the whole logistic chains, including transport and financial elements. And basically, these chains are needed in order to ensure the smooth delivery of Russian, uh, Russian grain. На встрече 22 июля в Стамбуле был подписан меморандум между Российской Федерацией и ООН. И в этом документе генеральный секретарь Антонио Гутерреш взял на себя обязательство добиться отмены вот тех ограничений, о которых я сейчас сказал. Это обязательство зафиксировано на бумаге. Надеюсь, что у генерального секретаря Гутерреша получится выполнить то, под чем он подписался. On the 22nd of July this year in Istanbul, a memorandum was signed between Russia and the United Nations. And according to this memorandum, the UN Secretary General has committed himself to do his best in order to stop those restrictions, to lift those uh, restrictions, and hopefully he will be able to succeed.
Вот видите, вы задали короткий вопрос, а я на него отвечаю достаточно долго. Все это потому, что западная пропаганда вбрасывает в общественное сознание именно такие вот лозунги. Раша, Россия виновата за энергетический кризис, за продовольственный кризис. И потом в мозгах обывателя это вот крутится, крутится, ему вбивают, и в это начинают люди верить. А если кто-то хочет разобраться поподробнее, вот я постарался кое-какие факты вам привести, чтобы вы обратили на них внимание. Есть немало других возможностей, других публикаций, где излагается правда о причинах нынешнего положения в мировой экономике. You see, you asked me a very short question, but I gave you rather a long answer. The reason for this is that our Western partner, our Western propaganda uh, expert, keep injecting various slogans like uh, it is Russia to blame for the current uh, food crisis. <coughs> And unfortunately, these slogans stay in uh, the brain, in the minds of uh, simple people. But if you are willing to know better, you, I try to give you some facts. And there are many other publications where you can find the real truth about the current situation. Спасибо. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Excellency, for the response to that question. I would like now to invite Mr. Patrick Conan of the Associated Press to raise his question. Thank you, your foreign minister. Uh, my question is, uh, you've ably elaborated about uh, the current crisis that uh, most African countries are facing. Are we going to see uh, a direct uh, intervention from Russia regarding this crisis in provision of maybe wheat? And then the other one is, you're traveling in Africa. There's tension between Egypt and uh, Ethiopia right now about the Renaissance Dam. Are you going to have this in your agenda. Thank you. Ну, вот видите, что касается первого вопроса, как я и сказал, у вас в голове есть слоган, такой лозунг, почему вы не решаете продовольственный кризис. А я постарался в ответе на первый вопрос показать, что жизнь, она всегда гораздо сложнее, чем лозунги, даже исходящие из Associated Press. Well, you see, uh, speaking about uh, giving an answer to your first question, I see clearly that uh, you have those slogans in your mind about uh, Russia being blamed for everything, and uh, you asking why Russia does not intervene in order to uh, find solution to this problem. But I try to uh, show you that life is much more complicated than all those slogans even given by Associated Press. What is related to relations between Egypt and Ethiopia? касательно плотины, возрождения, которую эфиопская сторона возводит на Голубом Ниле, мы выступаем за то, чтобы вопрос был решен между самими напрямую заинтересованными сторонами, как положено в любой ситуации. As for the relations between Egypt and Ethiopia and about the construction of the dig on the Blue Nile by Ethiopians, once again, we believe that uh, it is up to the stakeholders, namely to the two parties, to find a solution directly in line, uh, when it, uh, when, which is usually the case uh, for this kind of affairs. Есть нормы международного права, есть Хартумская декларация 2015 года, которую стороны подписали. Это хорошие ориентиры для того, чтобы они между собой находили обоюдоприемлемые решения. Мы такой процесс поддерживаем. We have uh, the international law, we have the, 19, oh, the 2015 Hartung Declaration, which could serve as a, a positive guidelines for the parties to find a solution, and uh, which will be mutually acceptable, and we totally support such approach. Мы не навязываем свое посредничество. Несколько лет назад Соединенные Штаты назначили какого-то специального представителя, который лихо взялся за эту работу, а потом опустил руки и, в общем-то, ушел в тень. Об этом сейчас никто и не вспоминает. We do not impose anything, we do not impose mediation services from our part. From our part. A few years ago, the U.S. Um, appointed their special representative who came and was very eager to find a solution, but then suddenly he left and is somewhere in the shadow. I am convinced that in this situation, as in other issues, 
на Африканском континенте оптимальным является посредничество, содействие, сопровождение переговоров по линии Африканского Союза и соответствующих субрегиональных африканских организаций. Continent, the best option would be the mediation follow-up coming from the African Union and uh, other sub-regional organizations. Thank you. I, I can help with a question about, you see, the, the minister explained to me in the sanctions by the West against Russia, they don't mention that they, they have sanctioned wheat or fertilizers. It's not mentioned, it's not part of the list. But he explained to me, the West has stopped Russian ships from calling on a number of ports. So how will the fertilizers go? or the way to go if the, if the ship don't move. Then there is the issue of the banks, that, that banks are not allowed to do business with Russia. So if you don't pay for the wheat you have bought or the fertilizer, then how do you, I think there was a third one, there was the, the, the banks and the, and the ship and I think the insurance also, insurance, insurance companies put the insurance charge very high. If you carry, so although there are no direct sanctions on the, on the, on, on the wheat and on the fertilizers by, by sanctioning the ships, uh, and that's why in their agreement in Istanbul with the Secretary General of the UN, He's supposed to handle those. That's what he briefed me. Uh, thank you very much, Your Excellency, for that additional explanation. May I now take this opportunity to ask Denis, Denis Bolotsky of Sputnik News to ask his question. У меня вопрос к министру Лаврову. Сергей Викторович, сейчас идет активная работа над новой концепцией внешней политики Российской Федерации. Насколько изменится роль и степень важности африканских стран для России в новой редакции этого документа? Спасибо. I have a question uh, addressed to the Minister Lavrov. Currently, there, there are preparation works for the new policy, or new Russia's international policy. How will uh, the role of African states change in this new edition of the policy? Я могу смело сказать, что роль африканского континента в концепции нашей внешней политики будет повышена, причем существенно повышена. Это произошло бы независимо от того, что происходит на западном направлении, а западное направление, как вы знаете, сейчас само себя отменяет. It uh, would have happened uh, regardless of the situation on the West. And as you see, currently, the, uh, the, our international policy with the West is uh, excluding itself. So, in terms of our conjunctural interests, the value of Africa will grow. And in terms of what the West does in relation to our country, it will objectively increase the value of the African direction in our work. Uh, so uh, we have our principle, our long-term relations, which do not depend on the current global situation. Uh, and so apparently the African uh, element will grow. But given the current situation and the current activities undertaken by the West, uh, objectively the role of African continent will grow. We have already started the work of the second summit of Russia and Africa. It is planned for the next year. И созданы соответствующие рабочие группы, которые в контакте, в координации с африканскими друзьями, я убежден, подготовят солидный пакет документов, который будет содержать практически значимые договоренности. 
We are currently preparing for the second edition of the Russia-Africa Summit, which will be held uh, next year. And there are working groups which are established, and I'm pretty sure that uh, in, uh, in concert with uh, our African friends, they are going to prepare a solid package of documents to be applied in practice. I'm going to have a seat now. Thank you once again, Your Excellency. May I now ask Betty Amam Kiror of New Vision to ask your question. Thank you, um, Honorable Minister. Uh, the war in uh, Ukraine has taken a toll on almost all economies in the world, and uh, Africa has been hard hit. How do you suggest or what do you think can be done to resolve the Russia-Ukraine problem? Thank you. I think you dropped something. Oh, thank you. Well, what about the economic side of the deal, you mentioned again that Africa is suffering from Russia. I have already tried to answer this question. У задающих вопросы журналистов есть задание спросить, почему Россия виновата и зачем Россия это делает. Ну, я еще раз могу только вас адресовать к ответу на первый вопрос. Well, as for the economic dimension, uh, basically you said that Africa had been hard hit uh, and uh, again that it is uh, Russia to blame for it. I think that actually I already gave the answer even twice to that question. But if our journalists are tasked, I'm identity to ask the question why Russia uh, has done that, I think I can address you only to the first answer that I gave. Что касается ситуации на земле и перспективы ее развития. Мы тоже об этом сегодня подробно с господином президентом говорили. Мы никогда не отказывались от переговоров, потому что всем хорошо известно, любые боевые действия заканчиваются за переговорным столом. As for the situation on the ground, we have also thoroughly discussed this issue with Mr. President today. And uh, I shall say that we never rejected talks and everyone knows that all hostilities, all hostilities just end up with the negotiations. И когда на ранней стадии нашей военной операции украинская сторона предложила переговоры, мы согласились, состоялось несколько раундов, которые привели к очень интересному этапу 29 марта в Стамбуле, когда украинская сторона предложила вариант договора, который мы поддержали. И об этом уведомили наших киевских коллег. Но с тех пор никакого ответа от них мы не получили. Хотя, подчеркну еще раз, мы согласились с их подходом, по сути дела. Нам известно, что такие наши коллеги, как Соединенные Штаты, Великобритания, ряд европейских стран, запретили украинцам договариваться с нами на той основе, о которой вот я упомянул. At the early stage of uh, this operation, uh, um, Ukrainian offered us to start the talks and we accepted. There were a few rounds of those talks and of those talks. And on the 29th of March in Istanbul, the Ukrainian side uh, came up with the draft agreement, which we supported. Uh, but uh, later on, there were no further answer from Ukrainians. And uh, it is really important because we accepted that and we accepted to work on the Ukrainian proposal, the Ukrainian uh, approach. But uh, later on, the United States, the United Kingdom and some European countries simply prohibited Ukraine to negotiate with us. Вот послушайте просто, почитайте не то, что вы видите в лозунгах на экранах или в соцсетях, а что произносят западные политики. А произносят они следующее. В этом конфликте Украина должна победить на поле боя. Украина должна достичь военной победы. Никаких переговоров с Россией, пока Украина не победит Россию. Почитайте, это же не я придумал. Basically, you can uh, read not only the slogans and the media, uh, what they say, but you can listen to what uh, European politicians say. And they say that Ukraine must have a military, military victory on the ground. They say that no talks are possible until the Ukraine has won. Я вот несколько дней назад в интервью произнес фразу, что у России нет предубеждения против переговоров с Украиной. 
A few days ago in an interview I said that Russia has no presumptions against talks with Ukraine. Немедленно, несколько часов даже прошло всего, как в Госдепартаменте официальный представитель заявил, что США считают сейчас не время для Украины вести переговоры с Россией. And uh, almost immediately, a few hours later, the State Department in the U.S. announced that they believe it is not a good time to negotiate with Russia. Well, it's up to you to make your conclusions. You can ask your American partners to see what the reason is. Мы не отказываемся от переговоров, но те, кто отказываются, должны понимать, что чем дальше, тем труднее будет с нами договариваться. Thank you, Excellency. May I now ask Samuel Senono of Uganda Broadcasting Corporation to ask his question. All right. Thank you. Uh, well, there are reports that some countries outside Europe continue buying Russian oil uh, despite the sanctions. If this is true, why can't Russia sell oil to Russia? Because fuel prices are... No, why, why can't Russia sell oil to Africa where fuel prices are increasing day by day? Знаете, тоже очень странный вопрос. Ну, во-первых, вы сказали, что сообщается, будто Россия продает нефть отдельным странам, несмотря на санкции. То есть в вашем вопросе содержится утверждение, что вот есть санкции, и все должны им следовать, если я правильно понимаю то, что вы сказали. There is another weird question, you know, uh, you said they say that Russia is uh, still selling oil to individual European states despite the imposed sanctions. So basically in your question there is an affirmation that there are sanctions and everyone has to obey. Мы продаем нефть любой стране, которая в этом заинтересована. И uh, если та или иная страна того хочет, никаких препятствий для этого нет. Будь это Индия, будь это Китай, будь это любая африканская страна. We sell oil to all the interested countries, and if there is a state which is interested, which is willing to buy oil, whether it is India or an African state, there are no obstacles for this. И не только продаем нефть, но и помогаем развивать свою собственную отрасль по переработке углеводородов, производству нефтепродуктов, использованию газа в промышленности. Not only we sell oil, but we also provide assistance in developing its own infrastructure in terms of refineries and um, oil products. И такие вот дискуссии у нас в том числе намечены, и они будут углубляться с нашими друзьями из Уганды. So we also are committed to, con uh, to having such discussion with our Ugandan friends on this topic. Finally, Your Excellencies, let me take this opportunity to invite Maria Finoshina of RT Russia, RT for Russia, to ask your question. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Finoshina, RT International. I can see, Mr. President, that no one is asking you questions, so I think it's unfair. So my question is for you. First, you've talked a lot about friendship. Um, between Uganda and Russia. What are the aims of further cooperation between the two countries? And also you've mentioned that back in the Cold War times, they ask you a question whether you are a pro-West or pro-East, and we know your answer. But unfortunately, today this question is also often asked, as we see the West is basically trying to put pressure on all the countries trying to work together with Moscow and actually openly sanctioning Russia's partners. As a country openly declaring that Moscow is a friend, does Uganda feel this pressure? And ahead of Mr. Lavrov's visit here, did anyone maybe approach you asking, for example, not to take pictures with Mr. Minister like we've seen in Egypt, for example? Thank you so much. Uh, 
nobody can ask, uh, tell me such a question because they know my position. They know our position. Maybe they tell others, but not, uh, not, not, not us. So people can't be so stupid as to, 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 to ask me that, that don't take a picture with so and so. Don't. <laughs> That's a joke. The, what, what are the, the interests are clear. The, the strategy of the African freedom movement of which we are, we are part is because the human race for the last four and, four and a half million years when human beings have been here has had two oppressions Operation by nature, floods, hunger, disease, drought, and oppression by man. When certain men oppress other people. You want to translate? No, no, it's okay. Uh -huh. You understand. So, therefore, if you look at our language in the resistance movement of and the African freedom fighting movement, we talk of progressive forces versus reactionary forces. Progressive forces are those forces which improve the condition of man irrespective of their social systems. So that's why if we see China coming up, it is a communist country. We are not communists ourselves here, but they have controlled hunger in China. They have controlled disease. They have produced more, 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 more jobs. They have created more electricity. So we are happy with them. We welcome them. Then you, you look at a country like Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is a, is a monarchy. See, we, we, I'm not a monarchist. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a Republican. But they are improving situation in their country. People have got more food, better houses. So we welcome that. Then if you have got another group, who may have a different, social, uh, a different social system, different political system, but they're improving the condition of man, we will commit because they are handling the aspect of oppression of man by nature. They are mitigating the suffering of man at the hands of nature, controlling floods, controlling disease, and so on. Then on the issue of oppression of man by man, that one will be handled according to each country. Each people know how to resist. When the people organized a revolution in, in Iran against the Shah, we, we, nobody organized it. It was the people themselves who, who did it. So therefore, if we stick to the UN Charter of cooperation among countries, irrespective of their different social systems, I think things will be much better for the world. When there is progress in China, when China was getting out of poverty, the price of steel went up. Why? Because they needed more steel in China. And the price went up. It went from $200 to $900. So we benefited here in Uganda from progress in China. The price of cement went up. The price of uh, copper, because they needed more copper wires for, for, for more electricity in China. This is the correct understanding of progress for the human race, the whole human race to come up. 
so the our interest with Russia is that when there is progress and stability in Russia, we also benefit because they buy some things from us, we buy things from them. And you hear we are going to cooperate in specific ways also, in space, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, space and uh, atomic energy and so on. This is what we are looking for. Win-win. Win-win for everybody in the world. And it's possible. It's possible. So this, this idea of rivalry is really something we are going to have to discuss with our... It's not part of our liberation movement strategy. No. The African liberation movement. Otherwise, we should be quarreling with those who, who colonized, who took slaves from here. We should be having uh, quarrels with them. Why did you take slaves? Why did you uh, colonize us? We should be having an enmity. But we, we forgot about that, and we are moving forward. Why? Because we want win-win cooperation in the world. Uh, thank you. I think we can go on. What is the next? Some... Your Excellencies, that brings the end to this segment of His Excellency's visit. I think we can proceed to the next one, Cham Cham. Uh, or eating. What do they call eating in, in Russian? What do they call it? What do you call eating? Gibda, Gibda. Huh? Gibda. Eda, Eda, we, we go for Eda now.